What's going on, everybody? It is your boy Dylan Matthews back at it again with another hometown take. Again, I'm doing this mobile on my phone because I had to get this out. It's been out there for a little while now, so I need to go ahead and get this video out. I am talking about the Atlanta Hawks and our draft picks and our draft situation, who we're going to draft, who we should draft and some other guys we could go to if we don't draft the particular guy I think we should draft. So, before we get into it, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Follow your boy Dylan Matthews at underscore Dylan Matthews on Instagram and Twitter, but make sure you hit, a, you hit that like button and you hit that subscribe button, most importantly. All right, let's go ahead and get it started. So, the draft lottery is over, and we know our Atlanta Hawks are picking six. So, not the exact spot we wanted to be. I know I did a earlier video. You can find that in my um, catalog on who I thought we should pick. And if we got the number four spot, but we're not at number four, we're at number six. So, this is where we should go. This is what, should we, what we should do now that we're at number six. I think we should draft Obi Toppin. Do I think Obi Toppin is going to be there at six? Not really. I'm not confident Obi Toppin is going to be there at six. I think either Golden State might pick him up. I know Golden State could go elsewhere. I know they could definitely go Anthony Edwards. I know they could go some other places too, but honestly, I don't think he's going to make it out of the top two. Um, I know they could also go James Wiseman. I know there's a chance he can make it out um, to number six, but I don't think he makes it out of the top two really, and he's definitely not making it past four. If we're at four, I say we sit and wait and see if he makes it at four. And if he doesn't, then go with some other guys I'm going to mention here in just a second. But we need to get Obi Toppin. Why? Obi Toppin could put us over the hump. He could get us to the next level. Why? Because Obi Toppin is a versatile big man, can shoot from three. This game, this NBA game right now is all about Spacing the floor and shooting from distance. That's what this game has evolved to. It's not centered around the big man anymore. It's centered around guard play and your big man being able to shoot from the perimeter. Most importantly, the three-point line. If your bigs can space the floor, you can do a lot. We see what the Lakers are doing with AD. We see what Houston has done with that small ball lineup. Now, I'm not saying we should go that small. But we see what the Lakers are doing with AD. Obviously, they got LeBron James, but still. You can get good guard play. You you know, we got our star in Trey Young. We got Clint Capella. We got John Collins. We're big enough. We got the good guard play. We're big enough to guard. And we got guys who can, you know, spread out the floor a little bit. We got our big rim protector in Clint Capella who we traded for. We need to get a, go get a versatile forward who can also play center and Obi Toppin. This would allow us to create our own death lineup like the Golden State Warriors. Obviously, tra Travis Schlank, our GM former GM of the Golden State Warriors who helped put together that death lineup, who went 73-9. and nine. We need to get our own guy who can help us create our own death lineup. Think about this. Trey Young at point guard. We could put either Kevin Herter, Cam Reddish, whoever you want to put at the two. Cam Reddish maybe at three, John Collins at the four or five, and Obi Toppin at the four or five. Oh, also DeAndre Hunter. Can't forget about him. So, Trey Young, Cam Reddish, DeAndre Hunter, John Collins, and Obi Toppin? That's a crazy lineup who can space out the floor. John Collins can shoot the three. Obi Toppin shot the three very well this season at 39% when, when he was with Dayton this season. And DeAndre Hunter obviously can shoot the three. And pff, Trey Young, we know what he can do. So having that death lineup, all those guys on the floor can shoot the three. Cam Reddish also can light it up from three. We know what he can do offensively. Obi Toppin will be able to play some defense. We know Cam Reddish um, can play defense. Once he's involved, he has great defensive potential. DeAndre Hunter is a 3 and D guy. John Collins can play defense as well. Guys who can play defense, spread out the floor, shoot it from three, run and gun up and down the court. Come on, now that lineup will be nasty. Obi Toppin is athletic. Right along with John Collins, who is athletic, Cam Reddish, DeAndre Hunter, all athletic guys out there with Trey Young, the superstar, holding it down, being the floor general. Come on, guys. That would be crazy. We need to draft Obi Toppin. I mean, his story says it for itself. 
he was a zero star recruit. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five. Zero. Zero star recruit coming out of high school. And he is now a CBS National Player of the Year. Wooden Award winner. Naismith and Associated Press Player of the Year. 20 points per game, 7.5 rebounds, 63.3 shooting from the field, and 39% three-point field goal percentage. Come on. This guy could be a stud. Yes, he's already 22, but that's fine. He's got some experience. He can contribute right away coming in from college being at 22 having a little extra experience he'll be a little bit more ready we'll see a little more a little bit more production out of him earlier come on guys ob Toppin is that dude he could put us over the top give us that death lineup ob Toppin is the guy we need to go after now like i said i don't know if he make it makes it to six so how do we go up to get ob if he doesn't fall to six well, we have some draft capital. We have some options. We can make some things shake. So we're at number six. So obviously we would trade that to get up to number four. That has to be part of it, which is fun. I mean, we just want to get up to number four. We'll trade that number six. They'll have that number six to pick up right away, whoever we trade with. Fine. Easy. But also, it's going to take a little bit more than that, too. We have the number 52 overall pick. Maybe we use that. We also could maybe trade our first round pick next year. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but the Hawks could easily be a playoff team next year i mean look at us before john collins got injured we looked promising we were out there putting up numbers almost getting wins against good teams and getting wins against good teams we beat the likes of miami we could beat philadelphia we could definitely compete with orlando i mean come on guys we could be a playoff team next year i think we are expected to be a playoff team next year so Trading that first round pick next year wouldn't be that bad because honestly, it might not be that good anyway if we're like an 8 seed, 7 seed. It's not going to be that great anyway. And we already know NBA drafts are now starting to become top heavy. So trading that pick will not be that deep. It won't be that bad. So get rid of that first round pick next year. I don't care if we have Miami second round pick next year. Throw that in too. Do what you got to do to get Obi Toppin. Do what you got to do to get at least up to number four. I think we at least have to get up to number four to get Obi. I don't think he's making it on the top four. Not sure if he'll make it even out of the top two. But if we at least get up to four, I'll be happy with that. And we'll see where we fall. So that's the plan to get Obi Toppin. That's who we should get. That should be our number one choice. But if we don't get Obi, which we might not, we have to see where else we could go. And the other guy I think we should get if we don't get Obi, who should be there at six for us, is the power forward or small forward, power forward, small forward out of Auburn, Isaac Okoro. Coming out of Auburn, he um, coming out his freshman year is a one and done guy, but was a freshman who started around seniors. And he started around seniors for a reason. He quickly emerged, also a Georgia guy, let me throw it in, so hometown guy. You know, I love that. But guy who quickly emerged around C, uh, seniors, 6'6 six, six wing, 12.9 points per game, 4.4 rebounds, and then they started 15-0 and 0 with him in the lineup, and they finished 20.4, and when um, when Okoro was in there, he locked down the, the, uh, the opposing team's best score. So this could be a 3 and D guy who we most desperately need, so that's a good fit for us. I would be A-OK -okay if we got Isaac Okoro. He's got good upside, 3 and D guy who could fill it up and shut the other um, best player, the opposing best player, down. We, every team needs a guy like that. Every championship team has a guy like that. So, Isaac Okoro, good choice. Now, one thing about Isaac Okoro, yes, he is young, 19-year-old. He'll, he'll take some time to develop, but that's OK. Um, but he would be a real difference maker. He's athletic can shut down opposing wings, obviously, and he already has great defensive instincts according to every, you know, draft expert, mock draft guy, whatever you want to call him. Isaac Okoro could be that dude for us, a shutdown dude who we need who could also give us um, some points off, off the bench. He could be like another DeAndre Hunter, but off the bench. So that's great. We could use a guy like that. So Isaac Okoro is a guy who we should go after if we do not get Obi Toppin. A guy who we could get, but I'll be scratching my head a little bit if we get him, is Onyeka Okongu. A lot of a lot of mock drafts I've seen have us getting him. Why, though? I'm not sure. 
Yes, he's a good big man, 16.2 points per game, 8.6 rebounds, shooting 61.6% .6 from the field. Um, he could stretch the floor a little bit. He's an undersized big, though. He's 6'9". Um, Obi Toppin is 6'9". So us getting him over making the effort to get Obi Toppin, I'm not quite sure of. He's a I will say, though, uh, Onyeka Okongwu was the main reason that um, USC won 16 of his first 20 games and probably would have made the NCAA tournament if it would have been played. Um, so he definitely was a valuable, if not the most valuable part to his team. So he would definitely fit in with John Collins and Click Capella could be a nice big man off the bench, rim protector, you know, lob type of guy. Even, you know, has a has some good moves. Too, I was watching some film on him. He has some watching some film on him. He has some good moves. Um, but I'm just not quite sure of it. I feel like Obi Toppin would be better, and I feel like Onyeka Okongu will be kind of a little bit redundant because we do have John Collins. We did trade for Clint Capella. So Onyeka Okongu would seem like doubling down at a center position we don't necessarily need to double down on unless we're not sure of Clint Capella, which how could we be sure of him? I mean, how could we say we're not sure of him either because we haven't seen him play in a Hawk uniform yet? So... I just don't think Onyeka Okongu, while he would be a good piece, I wouldn't be completely mad. I would just be kind of scratching my head to know what the plan is for him. Maybe they just want to have a replacement for Quick Compella, a good young replacement. Maybe they're trying to get some depth at the big man position and think we have enough wings, we have enough scores, which, I mean, is a valid point. Trey Young is going to do all the scoring. John Collins is going to do some scoring. Kevin Herter, we expect him to score more. Look for his shot, especially Cam Reddish and come along, coming along as a you know a good NBA player has shown sparks of greatness um, last year. So maybe they feel like we don't need really another scorer. We need more big men. But you can have that same big man in Obi Toppin. You could have that same undersized big who could bring more to the table in Obi Toppin. So that's just why I'm not sure about the Onyeka Okongwu predictions, and I'm not sure it would be such a great draft move for the Hawks. I really think we know needs to go get Obi Toppin. He will put us over the hump. He would give us such a nasty, nasty, nasty potential lineup. I think that's the route to go, but I wouldn't be mad also if we got Isaac Okoro, a good 3 and D guy who all teams need, just that defensive specialist who will lock down the opposing player's best score and best player overall. So we need a guy like that. So wouldn't be mad at Isaac Okoro and Oyeko Okongwu. Wouldn't be mad at it either. I understand it, but I just think Obi Toppin is the best overall fit for our Atlanta Hawks as of right now. Hopefully, we make that move and go get him, or maybe he'll fall to six. We'll see what happens. I'm excited for the NBA draft now. I can't wait to see what the Hawks do. And, of course, I'll be bringing you guys a video when the Hawks drop. I'll be bringing you some more videos, too. Tell me what you guys want to hear about. Tell me what you guys want to see me do a video on. Let me know whether it's the Falcons, Hawks, Braves. I'm all about the hometown takes, other stuff too. So I can talk, I can go out, I can talk about Luca and the Mavs, I can talk about whatever you guys want to. Speaking of Luca and the Mavs, real quick, you know, if the Hawks get Obi Toppin, we see Luca in the playoffs, you know, they, they've made themselves playoff contenders. They're looking pretty good, they're building a good team. We need to do the same thing for Trey, build around him. Get him some good pieces, and I think Obi Toppin would be that perfect piece to complement him. John Collins, Cam Reddish, DeAndre Hunter, Kevin Herter, our young core. Make it happen. I'm tired of hearing about Luka um, being better than Trey and all that good stuff. I did a video. I, my last video was on it, so go check that out, too. Please, please, Travis Slank. Please, Lloyd Pierce. Get us. Get Trey Young some help so I can stop hearing all about this Luka nonsense. Make it happen. Bring Obi Toppin to Atlanta. I want to see the boy here in a Hawk uniform balling out in them crispy new uniforms next year. So, we'll see what happens. Until I talk to you guys next time. Peace.